I'm Dean Cipolla and this is the Azure Academy. Today we're starting a new series and we're calling this the Migration Series. This series is going to talk about how to move things around related to Azure. So that could be Azure to Azure, other cloud services to Azure, on-premise to Azure, disaster recovery, business continuity, the Azure Migrate service, disk services like custom images, and more that we'll get to over time. So today we're going to start off by jumping into the documentation and we're going to be talking about storage services today. And let's go under products to storage and then we'll go to blob storage. You could do this from any one of them, blobs, files, tables, queues, and then we want to go under concepts to data redundancy. So this is where we have the different levels of storage or the different SKUs. First, we should start off with how we deal with storage. Storage in Azure basically is tens of thousands of storage accounts. And the way that we deploy them is according to these patterns that are listed here. Locally redundant storage, zone redundant storage, geo redundant storage, or read access geo redundant storage. Within the context of that, every storage account stores three copies of the data. So when you do a write, say you're going to put an image into a storage account, that image is actually written three times. Now that is for Microsoft's uh, protection as the cloud provider so that we don't lose your data. That uh, three copies is not something that is accessible by you. You don't see it. It doesn't cost you three times the size of that image. No, that's just part of the benefit of using the service. So that 100 megabyte picture that you just uploaded costs you in the cloud 100 megabytes worth of storage. Okay, and so you're not paying 300. Now that's locally redundant storage, three copies. Then there is zone redundant storage and zone redundant storage has to do with those same three copies, but they're tied directly to availability zones. This is something that we'll get more into as we go on here, but basically uh, availability zones take the place of going forward in the future, things like availability sets. Availability sets were things that were tied directly to VMs. Zones encompass all of the other kinds of Azure ser uh, services and resources that can support availability zones, and that is growing over time. So storage, load balancers, networks, gateways, key vaults, uh, VMs, all these kinds of things, and more can be supported with zone redundant storage three copies, but they're tied to a specific zone. Then we get to geo redundant storage, GRS. This is where we keep three copies, just like locally redundant storage. But in a paired Azure region, we keep another three copies. This was for Microsoft's protection in the past, because if something happened to that primary region where you had your stuff, we wanted to give you the option that that data would be safe and available in another region. But that was just for Microsoft's protection so that your data was protected three times over here and then three times over there. So we were really, really sure we didn't lose your data. So of course, this would carry with it double the cost of locally redundant storage because now instead of three copies, now you're keeping six. And then on top of that was the read access GRS or RAGRS, and this is where we keep three copies over here, three copies over there in the paired region, but you could get read access to what was in the paired region. Okay, so a little more uh, option and flexibility there if you needed that kind of thing. And there's other features down here that you can look at about failovers and region-wide outages, what we support, the standard SLA around all these things, and storage pricing, etc. Why are we talking about this basic concept of Azure? Well, it's because from our document documentation page you can also get to our blog and in the blog there was an announcement made recently and right here account failover now in public preview for Azure storage what is this well let's take a look so this has to do with customers using GRS or RAGRS and if you are using those kinds of storage accounts there is now the option to personally initiate failover from one region to another. You see this GRS feature, as I said, was traditionally for Microsoft's protection so that we were sure that if we had a region-wide issue or outage that your data would be safe in a secondary region. What this new feature does is this makes it so that you can choose 
to fail over. Maybe Microsoft's not having a problem in your region, but you need to have a disaster recovery or business continuity event. So now you need to move from the primary region to the secondary region. We're now giving you the option to be able to fail over your storage account to that secondary region. So this is uh, part of the disaster recovery or migration path that you could follow to get your data from one place in Azure to another. And then there's more stuff here in the blog and how it works and how to set it up. And then I'm gonna go back under documentation and we'll go back to products and storage. And this time we'll go to blob storage directly here. And under concepts, data redundancy, and then there is a new link here for disaster recovery and failover. And this is kind of what we're going to be going through. And then uh, there is a few things that we have to do here. Uh, first of all, some caveats. This works with new storage accounts. Now they can be generation one or generation two. And there is a, a resource provider feature that has to be added. And we'll go through all of that and we'll deploy a storage account and we'll gain access to this preview feature. And then after that, we will walk through the process. So and all of that is listed in the documentation here, as well as some pretty little graphics of what it is. One other big caveat is any kind of failover from one place to another generally involves some amount of downtime and potentially some amount of data loss. So big caveat, this is actually the thing that's kept Microsoft from doing this in the past is we didn't want to lose anybody's data. But there was so many people asking for this feature that here we are responding to the community and bringing this about. But as great as the idea is and the concept, it can potentially maybe perhaps come with some data loss when you do the failover. So be aware of that and understand that uh, that's what you're agreeing to if you go into using this feature. All right, with that, down here in the uh, about the preview, currently this preview feature is only available in West US 2 and that paired region of West Central. And in order to make this work, what you need to do is register for the preview. So you would connect to Azure and get your subscription registered, and then you register the service provider that's here for the failover. And I'm gonna show you how to do that inside the Azure portal using the Cloud Shell. All right, and here's our Cloud Shell, and I will give it the PowerShell command. It's the beauty of using the Cloud Shell is I don't have to do the login to Azure, and I don't have to get my Azure contacts. It already knows all those things. I can just give it the command, and now it says that my registration state is pending. Now the second command here is something that you can run, which will then show you what the current state is of that registering provider, which is pending. Now, in the documentation here, we tell you that this can take up to one to two days to receive approval for this registration. So be patient. It is a preview feature and the feature may change a little bit as time goes on. It's been a little while here and I've gotten uh, myself registered. So let's go over to the portal and we will go to our resource groups. And I've got a group here called migration that I've created for this. And let's create a new storage account. And now there are some caveats here. So we want to give it a name that's appropriate to the storage account. So it does need to be in the West US 2 or West Central region. It does need to be a standard storage account. It could be Gen 1 or Gen 2, but it does need to be either RAGRS or GRS in order for the failover process to work. So I will choose GRS and it can be either cool or hot tier. And then I will just go ahead and create Okay, deployment's underway, and we'll be done in a minute. Okay, so let's go to our new storage account. Under our geo replication, we can see here that the storage account's primary location is in West US 2, and the secondary or failover region is West Central. And you can see the graphic here indicating the direction of the traffic flow, which goes from West US 2 over to West Central. Now you can see that we've got a button here that says prepare for failover. So in order to do this, I'm gonna to go to our blobs and create a new container. And inside there, I'm just gonna upload a couple files. So we'll click upload and we'll hit our folder button here to get our files. And we'll just take a couple of these guys and we'll hit upload. 
our data is uploaded back to our configuration here just so you can see what's going on. Our configuration here says that secure transfer is enabled. We have a geo redundant storage account. Azure Active Directory integration is not enabled. So all basically default settings from what we have. In geo replication, we've got our button here to do the failover. So I'll hit prepare for failover. And then when we do, it's going to give us this message here that we have to agree to. So basically to read through this means, okay, you're going to do the failover. That means you're flipping which is your primary and which is your secondary regions. It also means that at this moment, is when the last sync has happened. So this is the replication from West US to West Central US. When you do this failover, your storage account will be converted to a locally redundant storage account in the failover region, in this case, West Central US. And you will have to re-enable in the configuration tab to set it back to GRS or RAGRS. Okay, and once you do, data replication will happen. And once the data is resynchronized, then you'll be able to do another failover should you need to. But these data charges are considered egress so you will be paying for the data transfer charges. With all of that accepted, you can type yes to confirm, and we push the failover preview button, and then we have failover in progress. Now, this will take a little bit of time. Depends, of course, on how much data you have. Uh, the, the engine itself has to work to redirect the primary secondary connections to convert it to LRS storage from whatever you currently have and to bring the storage account back up online and make sure that everything's ready to go. And we'll be ready to look at the storage account and continue. So the one thing I'll also point out while this is going on is during the failover process, you can see that the blobs are unavailable. This is because we're causing the failover. For the sake of data integrity, we don't want to have these things uh, being able to be written to in the middle of the failover. That's why there's the potential risk for downtime because the, the right uh, store has to be locked so that we can make the failover. So if you were trying to write data to this right now, wouldn't work. All right, so as you can see here, we now have completed the failover process and it says that GRS replication is available as well as RAGRS for this storage account, which we can set in the configuration. And now we are in just the West Central US region. And from our graphic here, we no longer are transmitting data to another region. Okay, so we have completed a full failover and, and you can see we've now configured to LRS. And if we look at our blobs, there we go, our blob is available and there's all of our files. So we've completed a successful failover. Now, what we wanna do is fail back. So let's go to the configuration and we'll change to GRS storage and hit save. Okay, and now we go back to geo replication and now we've got another indicator. So as you can see, we're in the West Central US as our primary now and we are transmitting the data uh, for failover and replication to West US 2, which you can see in the graphic here. Now the data is going back the other way. Right now it says failover cannot be initiated as replication is still in progress and the data has not been synced. We pushed all the data originally from West US to over to West Central. Now the data has to go back and be synchronized. And this does take a little bit for that to happen. And then once that is complete, then we'll be able to initiate another failover to go back. Okay, and now that we have initiated the geo replication again, which we set in our configuration, now we're back to here where we can push the button for failover. And again, gives us the same warning. We say yes, and we failover, and we see our failover is in progress. So again, this will just put everything back. It will be LRS, and then you've got to reset it to GRS. So this is, again, a preview feature. Expect things like performance to increase uh, over time as it gets uh, more developed. Also, uh, probably some other feature sets, uh, maybe some uh, other buttons to show up, or PowerShell commands. Who knows what they'll come up with as we expand on this feature and uh, people can offer their feedback through the Azure portal or through things like user voice or the Azure advisors. So if you're not familiar with those, give me a comment down below and I'll tell you how to get into uh, some of that stuff. Hope you enjoyed this exciting new storage failover that's been a hot topic asked for for quite a while. This is the first of our migration series videos. We'll be doing a bunch of new videos along this line. So give me some comments below. Tell me what you're interested in. Like and subscribe. Happy learning.